Welcome to the Chelsea Skidmore Show. I'm here today with Julia Fox. I, we were trying to talk about how to describe her. It's so hard to because there's so many different things that she does. Um, artist, model, author, <laughs> fashion designer. Yeah, I don't do that anymore, though, thank God. Oh, you don't? No. I. You know what happened? I was like 22. And I hadn't, like, gone to college. Well, I did, but I didn't finish. And then I saw my friends, like, graduating and stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? So I was just like, okay, I'll just start a fashion line and I'll do that. But I didn't. I was never, like, invested in it. But I did it with my best friend and she was more invested in it. So it was kind of like it just kind of became her thing. Um, it did well, though. It did okay. I, I think I told you this. I was in Cannes uh, at the film festival and saw this, like, gorgeous girl wearing this green dress. And I was like, oh, my God, I love your dress. Where is it from? And she's like, it's Francesca Fox. Am I saying it yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I That's thought that so was funny. so cool. Yeah. No, there were times where I'd, like, just be at a cafe and, like, look outside and see. And those moments were, like, really gratifying because it's like, wow, like, I – sketched that in one second <laughs> and yeah, you really? are wearing it yeah definitely so did you and um Brianna both do the designing together or was like, I did the designing uh-huh mm -hmm. and then she did like the business side of things yeah yeah and also the technical side of things because I'm not technically trained so I would just like draw a sketch like a like I mean I'm talking like a stick figure situation <laughs> And then I'd be like, okay, have this made. And then obviously, like, she'd be like, well, you know, technically this isn't going to be, this isn't going to work, blah, blah, blah. So um, we're, she I, was uh, kind of, I was more like the artist and she was more, like, grounded and, yeah. yeah. Were either of you trained at all in, like, No, she went to, textile? like, fashion merchandising school uh -huh. and had done a bunch of internships through our high school that we went to, um, City As School. Where they, instead of, like, being in class, they just send you out on internships. And she took a lot of fashion internships. So she knew already about the industry and, yeah, textiles and all that type of stuff. So she had, like, she had, I had zero experience. But she yeah, had. you and your group of friends have a really, like, cool sense of style. Yeah. <laughs> well, they do more than I do. But I feel um, like you, you all do. We're, it's not like them, unfortunately. I don't have the, um, the like, balls almost to wear what they wear. It's almost like the new generation of, like, club kids from the 90s kind of vibe. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. They they have that vibe. <laughs> what? Like, I, because I don't, honestly, I don't even go out, but, like, you'll see them out, like, all the time, and, like, they always look amazing, and Brie is just so confident, and, like... She has zero body dysmorphia. Uh -huh. Like, she's literally someone that can look in the mirror and be like, wow, I look fucking amazing. I'm so hot. And, like, she Whoa. means it. Yeah, she totally <laughs> means it. It's the most amazing thing in the world. Um, and and then, obviously, like, Richie looks amazing Yeah, I was thinking about the three of you guys last night, um, Julia and her two friends, Richie and Brianna, and um, – and I was like, Brianna, I feel like is the most like fashion forward, interesting, like yeah. stylish. I don't know. It, 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 yeah. I wonder like where she gets that from or you know, is Brianna, inspired by. Brianna's mom is like such a hoarder, but she <laughs> hoards like all these amazing clothes. And like, I remember I lived with them in high school and like the ceiling was just. Like, you know, the pipes on the ceiling, mm -hmm. those were used as, like, like to hang, like, <laughs> like clothing off of, like, hangers and stuff. Like, there was so much that there was, like, clothing racks on every single door, um, hats, like, on the wall. Like, it was just so much that there wasn't, like, a square inch of, of w free space. Like, mm -hmm. it was all clothes. And I think um, – yeah, I mean, her mom is such a hustler, too. Like, she'd go to, like um, – like, you know, when, like, schools in the area would have those, like... Fundraisers? Yeah, or, or like those, like, clothing, clothing drives. Yeah, like, she'd go and, like, work the drive, but, like, <gasps> really just take 
take them. Had Did she? she? And yeah, picked and out the, all the good shit. And the church and everything. And she, she'd literally be at, like, other people's schools. Like, not even the ones that Brianna went to. Like, and, like, she, look them up in the paper? I mean, I think she was just very involved in the neighborhood. So she just knew, like, through other kids that went to the other schools, like, when they're Oh like, my God, that's yeah, next level. Out. Yeah, so like, I mean, I think it's always been in Brianna's like, <gasps> like blood to just like love clothes and like go crazy for them. And what neighborhood? Do, well, you grew up between Italy and New York. I moved here when I was six. Here to America, to okay. New York, Manhattan. I moved, my dad's my dad's from New York, and my mom is from Italy. Um, she still lives in Italy. She never moved to the United States. She didn't like it. And um, she doesn't like Americans. And I totally get that, though. Yeah. I mean, I fucking love Americans. I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. But every time. It's like, oh, Italians are better. Italians are fucking boring. (laughs) I feel like, though, when you go to Europe and then when you, like, come back, Americans are so gross. Oh, but that's the beauty. It's Uh the humanity. Like, Uh here there's just so many, like, levels of humanity. And they're all very interesting and fascinating. Whereas, like... I find that – well, no, there's the north and the south, but I specifically am talking about the north because that's where she's from. It's like they're like robots. Like they're huh. like they're very traditional. Um, there's one way to do things. Doing anything another way is like completely stupid. They all dress the same. I swear to God, they all have the same handwriting. Like I'm not <laughs> kidding you. That's so interesting. Literally – because I, I, when, I, when I was 14, I moved back there. Uh-huh. Um, for two years. And I just remember every single person had the same handwriting. And That's then I so wrote like how my dad writes, which is like, you cannot, like, it, you can't even read it. Um, so yes, they're just boring and they're so judgmental. Like I remember I moved there and I already had like my tongue pierced, my belly button, and I had like two tattoos already. And I just, and I wore thongs. Like none of the girls, at 14, you're not wearing a thong. Like, come on, get with the program. And they just all like talked so much shit about me. But I didn't care because I knew deep down that I was cooler. Uh You know, I didn't let them get to me. I knew that I was cooler than those fools. But um, (laughs) what part of Italy was this? Lake Como. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, There were amazing parts of it. Like like you could, I remember when I moved there, there was like a cigarette vending machine and you could just go and put Mm -hmm. in like two euro and get a pack of cigarettes. And I was just like floored. And then you could get alcohol. They never carded. That's never happened to me once in Italy. And the club stayed open until like the last person left. Yeah. Why do so, I always think of George Clooney when I hear like yeah. that's like the number one thing? Americans yeah, I never think saw of. him, but there would be George Clooney sightings around. But I went to boarding school in Lugano in Switzerland oh when God, I was fifteen, and um, it's right it, near us. Yeah, and did you ever cross the border and come uh, into Italy? Yeah, but we would go to like Milan for the weekend. Of course, how yeah. close is Lake Como to Milan? Like an hour. Oh, okay. I never knew exactly where Lake Como was. It's it's on the border of Switzerland. Like oh. like Lake Como mm-hmm. goes into Switzerland. Like there is a Swiss part of the lake. Mm. Yeah, because everyone think. always talk. I must have seen it then. <laughs> you definitely passed it. If you were taking yeah. the train, I'm sure you probably crossed it. There because you ha- kind of have to. Yeah. So growing up, I feel like in Italy, like it, I mean, growing up in New York would make you grow up fast. Yeah. But I also feel like growing up in Europe, there's, like, it's so funny because, like, I when I moved there, like, I had moved there because I was, like, partying too much. And my yeah, mom same. thought that <laughs> if I went there that I would, like, level out. But I think people don't, you know, obviously there's no drinking age. People and People don't realize that you could really just, it's, it's a free-for-all. Yeah, but it's, like, people there, do you think, like, it's, I, I, I feel like some people could say, like, people in Europe, like, aren't even alcoholics. That's not a thing. But do you know, right? It's not a fucking thing. Because they just drink. And 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 neither is, like, mental illness. Really? Like, in Italy, like, (laughs) it is, but not really. Like, I can't, like, no one goes to see a psychiatrist. If someone's crazy, she's like, like, oh, that's a crazy girl. Yeah, like, no, like, I remember, like, I was telling my mom, like, no, like, I'm a a serious drug addict. Like, I'm bipolar. Like, I'm really crazy and I'm unwell. And she just doesn't accept it like she it's literally yeah. it's almost like it she doesn't even know what those words mean like she doesn't she cannot like she just doesn't understand and and she's a psychologist really she's a criminal psychologist in italy yeah 
But for some reason, and I remember I was always just like, wow, like you actually don't make any sense at all. That's weird. Well, what kind of criminals is it in Italy? Like, is it, is she like works mob for the state. people? She, yeah, she does get mob people. Um, she works in a prison. So she actually gets like a lot of like illegal immigrants or, or hmm. just immigrants. Um you know, just the people that, like, Italy's arresting right now. That's, like, what Jodie Foster does in Silence of the Lambs, right? Isn't she a criminal psychologist in I that? can't remember what Jodie Foster did. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in, like, <gasps> 10 years. But uh, I maybe. So what was it like growing up in Italy? Um, The one thing I can say is that um, I'm so thankful for that time. Like, even though I... Like Italians, like really aren't my cup of tea or whatever. Um, I learned about quality. Mm. I learned about good food, good quality of life, um, like ni- nice things. You know, whether it's like a car, like just like everyone in Italy, like looks good. Like even though they yeah. all look the same, they all look good. And I also got to see like. Um, like healthy like family units and stuff. So I'm really because I over here I didn't get to see that at all. Yeah, family there is like the most important. And don't people live with like their parents Forever. until they get very old? And that's like not uncommon yeah, to move out. No, no. And and then you have your parents come live with you. Like there's like really like old people homes. I don't think are very popular there. I've, I've uh-huh. never seen that. I saw old ladies in their freaking house until the day they died. You know. Yeah. Always that- at the window being nosy. <laughs> I swear to God, it's like it's like out of a movie. What would your mom say about you wearing um, a sweatsuit? What do you mean? Like, don't do you know? Like, I feel like Italian people are always like more dressed up. Yeah. So oh, if you no no no, not really. She doesn't say anything to me. I sh- uh, no, she doesn't really say anything. It's kind of just you know. a joke about you wearing this because <laughs> you were talking yeah. about how they're always like yeah yeah no I refined. I wear sweatsuits too. But you know in in northern Italy where my mom is from at least like you no one leaves the house in mm-hmm. like sweatpants and it's yeah. very rare. You know yeah. everyone always looks very good. You know leather shoes, leather bag, like you know stuff like that. I'm going in August to Italy. Mm-hmm. Where are you going? Positano, Capri, Rome, Okay, like that's Tuscany. the South, you know, and uh-huh. the South is already like so much more fun and like over there they're really crazy and you should really, if you go to Naples, which is right near yeah. Positano, you should go see Pompeii because I um, – go see it. It's I haven't, out of this Yeah, world. I haven't been. I've only been to Naples to like take the ferry to Capri before. Yeah. But um, I hear Naples is like uh, like scary. Almost. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it is scary. Or not scary, I but, was, like, dangerous. But it's dangerous. Da- yeah. yeah, like, you'll like see. Like, you have to take off your jewelry or something. No. That's what someone was saying yesterday. No. <laughs> also, it's like, okay, maybe if you're, like, from the middle of nowhere, okay. America, sure, take Sheltered. off your jewelry because they'll, they'll read victim on your forehead in a second. But, like, if you're from New York, mm-hmm. you have just a different air about you. Like, mm-hmm. they don't – I've been literally been all over the world and I've never been fucked with because, yeah. like, I just – it's, like, a different – you know, well, knowing not, how to carry yourself. Exactly. I, yeah. Like, I'm not walking around with, like, my head in the clouds and stopping <laughs> to take a photo every two seconds. You know, I walk fast. I walk direct. And, like, it it doesn't leave that much leeway to get, like, mugged. Yeah. You just got to, like, point A to point B. Yeah. Yeah. So you left Italy when you're six to move with your dad to the city. Yeah. And, um, and then you came back when you're 14. Yeah. But I also went there – for mostly every summer not every Mm -hmm. single summer but mostly and I would spend like two to three months with my grandpa in in our like mountain house over there and those are 100% like my best memories of my whole life really yeah like I am so thankful for that because it's like if I didn't have that I don't know where I'd be where was that it's in the mountains like near Austria Oh, in Austria. I've been to the mountains in Austria. No, but it's not in Austria, but it's like close to those. Well, I was in like Kranz Montana. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Whatever. I don't know. It's the it's the Dolomites though. It's those mountains. Uh-huh. The Dolomites. I don't and then know. in in And what happened there? I lost my virginity there. <laughs> like I just really came of age, oh, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I feel like while I was there I really got to like live out a childhood that I didn't have. In, in New York. And so, like, I would, like, build things with, like, wood and, like, a hammer. And, like, I would just, like, 
play with the neighborhood kids and like this is before like there were big like game boys and stuff but like no like kids still played yeah especially there because they're a little behind they've always been especially before like really the internet took over and social media so it was like it was just like a really nice simple time I wonder if people are sitting around on their phones as much in Europe as they are here kind of Oh, yeah, that sucks. kind of. Not what as bad you- as here, but kind of. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like people are more like focused on conversation. Yeah, it's true. It's true with the people in front of their face. And also, like Italians are just very much like right or wrong, kind of. And I feel like they would say like, "Oh no, it's wrong to be on my phone all the time," mm. and like actually stop being on the phone. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. They're like maybe like less addictive. Like I don't know what their their issue. Like I don't know what their deal is. Less mental problems. I think so. So when did you start partying? Mm, maybe like sixth grade. Uh huh. Maybe like the summer after sixth grade, or maybe it was sixth grade. I know that the summer after sixth grade, I was already smoking weed, but I don't know if it was like real part I mean I definitely like I don't even remember my first kiss like I don't know who it was with like Uh I literally like started drinking and then it was over like I don't it was just it's all the blackout like I don't really remember that much but probably like middle school I remember okay so I met you at a 12 cent meeting Mm -hmm. and I remember hearing you share about like being on heroin and someone was dragging you up the stairs do you know what I'm talking about? It was like when you were younger, I think like you or a boyfriend maybe you were with, like OD'd or oh something. Oh my God, yeah, I overdosed. I remembered heat, that. And we both like didn't have phones. Like I forgot it was like a real like trap situation. We like both didn't have phones and he had to like drag me down the stairs and then like bang on all my neighbor's doors and then he took off. What? Because he, he was like scared there? that he would get arrested. Yeah, he like waited until like one of the neighbors came out and then he dipped yeah and I remember it's so dark and I remember that I like woke up at Beth Israel well no I I woke up in the in the hallway after they like Mm -hmm. got me like revived but then they like insisted on taking me to the emergency room and I remember um calling him nonstop. Because I, I don't know how I figure – oh, yeah, because he took the heroin. Like, I, I knew that he took it. Like, I don't even think I, like, had the confirmation, but I just knew what the type of person he was. And I was just calling him nonstop from, like, the phone in, like, the ho- near the hospital bed. Because you wanted not, it. Yeah. Because I was like, I can't believe you just, like, left with the heroin. What the fuck? Like, I want to, like, meet up now and do it. Like, yeah. it was just so dark. And he went to go meet up with his ex-girlfriend. What? Yeah, super, what an super asshole. traumatizing. Yeah. And she has a really sad story. She was like on facial abuse. What is facial abuse? It's like that really hardcore porn thing where they like shove your head down the toilet and like really? Yeah, yeah. She I've was, never heard of it. She was like really dark and then and now she's like in a wheelchair because she got some sort <gasps> of infection from shooting up and it like infected her spinal cord and now she's like wheelchair bound yeah it's super super sad yeah wait what is facial abuse it's like it's like um like there's like a black couch and the guys that shoot it are so degrading like they're like they're just the worst like they'll literally like tell the girl that she's like ugly or like stupid and like yeah like it's just the absolute they pick those girls who they could yeah yeah and they, like, shoved her head down a toilet and, like, I guess, like, made her throw up. Like, I don't know. It was just super dark. It was Whoa. Almost, yeah. I'm just glad I don't have any more, like, affiliation to people like that. To yeah. So yeah. What other types of affiliation? Um, what do you mean? I don't know. What other dark affiliations did you have? Oh, my God. <laughs> like, when you ask me like that, I can't even think. But obviously, Well, what like, types of jobs so did you have? Um, I always... <laughs> um, I always, like, worked. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I always did that because it was the only way I could get money. But, like, obviously, like, I, I think my first job was, like, like, legitimate jobs was, like, I worked in a shoe store in the hosiery department because that was the <laughs> only department that they would could put me in because I was such a retard. <laughs> and no one went in the hosiery department. So they uh-huh. just stuck me in there. And then... 
I worked at Veneros, the pastry shop in, in New York, because my high school was, like, right down the block. And then I worked at Maggie Moo's ice cream, but then they, like, tried to get me to wear the cow suit. And I was, like, Ew. I literally was, like, I quit. I can't do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it was, like, a really hot day. And I was just, like, I'm going to die, so I have to quit to save my life. <laughs> and... Um, and then when I, I had to move out of my house, and that's when – but I always was, like, shady. Like, I always did, like, shady drug deals. I dated a drug dealer for a really long time when I was, like, 15 to 17. So I always did get money, like, on the side. But those were, like, my legitimate jobs. And then in high school, my last year of high school, I had to – I went and worked in the sex industry as a dominatrix. Where – I tried to work as a dominatrix – in New York, um, I, fe- I forget, like, the place, but um, it was in the West Village, and I, like, I, f- I think I must have found it on, like, Craigslist or, oh, Pandora's Box? Yeah, that's where I work. Really? Yeah. That is so funny, and yeah. I remember I had to, like, send in, like, um, and I'm not a dominating person at all, so yeah. I, I think they could tell. I didn't get the job. <laughs> Which I think what? is funny because I feel they like they hire it's, anybody. I what know. Did you do? I feel like because I really think they could tell I'm not like. I had to write this like for we had to like write like an essay. You have to write yeah like about sex like a fantasy about and- like and it was like so hard for me because I'm just not I'm more of like uh, a masochistic kind of not anymore. Yeah, yeah. But like, well, they have. They also hire submissive. I they guess they hired. Sub, they hire subs. So oh, it's really? Weird that they didn't hire you, like at least as a sub. Yeah, it, I remember. I was like googling was stories. Was it a fat Ukrainian pl- woman that told you no? I can't remember. I was like eighteen, and I was plagiarizing, and I just looked up how everyone uses like the word pig. So I was like, "You pig, you pig!" Like hundred <laughs> times, and then I went there, and then I looked around, and then they were like, "Yeah, I don't think so." I don't know, but but I thought that was so weird because it's like who. They literally hire anyone. I know. Like, the place is a literal pigsty of, like, women that are disgusting. I I was surprised. Yeah, that's... I'm surprised, too. That's really weird. I must have, like, had, uh, like, not believable energy or something. Or men, you know... I don't know. I've just never heard of them turning So what was it like working there? Because I've always wanted... I feel like I've always wanted... Well, I'm a natural. Like, Uh I was, like, born to do that. Um, Like, 100%. So... For me, also, I have this thing where I can really, like, disconnect me mm-hmm. from whatever situation I'm in. Yeah, like, I can disassociate. Yeah, like, when I would leave there, like, I was no, I was back to being Julia, and I had absolutely zero co- ties to mm-hmm. what I had just done, you know? Like, totally. I, it, to me, once, like, clocked out, it was over. I didn't even... Like, it didn't – and then I saw some girls that were, like, really affected by it, and I was, like, trying to explain, like, no, when you're here, you are whatever your mistress name is. Like, while uh-huh. while you're here, you're Scarlet, so you need to just – it's all acting. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's all yeah. fantasy play. What was yours? Valentina. Oh, I feel like I, – I don't think I – I don't know. I feel like I've seen yeah, that yeah. name associated with – Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, yeah, and, like, what kind of people came in? Um, a lot of Hasidic Jews that I love. I love the Hasidic Jews because they are so clean. They're clean. They're respectful. Um, you just know what you're going to get. You know, they're never, um, yeah, I just like them. I just like them the most. I was a stripper, I don't know, in New York, mm-hmm. and I gave – there was a lot of a, a lot of Hasidic Jews came in too, and I gave one of them a lap dance, and he came in his pants. Oh, my God. It was God. so gross. That's so funny. Just had to tell that story. Um, so – and, like, what kind of stu- – what what did most people – did, like, most people want a specific thing, or was a there, A lot like, of golden showers. A lot of guys want to get – Yeah, a lot <gasps> of guys like to get peed on. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. Yeah. Where did you pee on them? Um, there was, and then it was always like, close your eyes, but it's like, come on. Um, yeah. Cause your no nudity is loud. Oh, well, really? peeing on someone isn't allowed either, but I don't know what. Yeah. Oh, it was. Nudity wasn't allowed, but listen, if you're going to throw me an extra fucking couple hundred bucks, sure. And they just stayed care. in their clothes? No. Or they're naked? No, no, no. They have to be naked. Okay. Because you need them to be like as vulnerable and like embarrassed as possible so that you can really like twist the knife. Did they like, teach call them you? Little dick and everything. Yeah. What kind of things did you call them? 
just like <sighs> little dick, worthless, but that like you were born to serve me, like your life means absolutely nothing. Like you work for me now, give me your money, <laughs> like stuff like that. <laughs> what do you think about financial domination? Um, I've had a few of those guys, but they never last that long. They're yeah. always very sporadic because, you know, they run out of money or they're like, oh, my God, this is like I can't pay my rent or my bills or whatever. What's the most you ever got from someone? I remember I used to meet up with this guy at an ATM machine. <gasps> yeah. And then oh, he'd, he'd, put in his car, he'd put in his card, he'd put in his pen, and then he'd like step aside. And then I would take out as much as I wanted. And then I would just be like, hey, bye. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. It was like such a fantasy. What a rush. I know. I How know. much did you get from him? In total? Yeah, uh, oh, I don't even know. Or but, like when you got to enter in a number. Um, I mean, I was never like that cruel. Yeah. Because I did want him to come back. So it would always be maybe like 700 or 800. <laughs> That's or sick. That's yeah. fun. Yeah. I was just looking that up recently because I did something did like a thing like that in my acting class. So I was yeah. like watching a bunch of videos. That's so funny. Yeah. Is there like a forum for that? Um, I wish. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, they're really hard to come by. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be in the industry for a really long time. And then a lot of pro doms after a while, they can, they maybe get like three or four of those and then yeah. they're set for however long, you wow. know, like that's really the ultimate goal. If you're in the industry for a long time, you'll, you'll secure a bunch of financials and then you're, you don't ever have to work again. Yeah. I saw one girl said, um, that like a guy that she only talked to one time, like sent her maybe like $200,000 no. in like one click and then never talked to her again. That is a dream. I know. No one ever like believes me with this story. But one time in New York, I like met this guy out and we were just talking about purses. And I was like, I really want a Celine bag. It was when they were cool. Yeah. And, um, and he said, meet me the, tom like tomorrow at, at 10 a.m. at Celine um, on like Bond Street or, or no, we were meeting at Bond Street, but he already got the bag. And then the next day I like woke up at like 930 and I was like, that's not happening. And he texted me and he was like, I already got the bag. Just meet me down here. And he handed it to me and I never saw him again. That's crazy. Isn't it? And Ugh. I and no one like ever believes me like that that's the story. I love being a girl. But I <laughs> but I do feel like there's like guys who are like who get off on that. Totally. Yeah. And I never talk to him again. I don't even like That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're they're um they're weird. I d I don't I don't know what the thrill is. I really don't. I don't know. I'm surprised he pulled through, though, because a lot of guys will be like, yes, yes, in the moment. And then when the time comes, they, like, get cold feet about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else? So we can close up the dominatrix. Is there anything else besides golden jet? I mean, I love that. Like, Yeah. Uh, um, isn't it hard to pee under pressure? You know what? I'm not pee shy at all. <laughs> pee shy. I'm just not. Like, I can literally pee anywhere. Uh -huh. So, no, but there were some girls that, like, couldn't do that. And it, they, it sucks for them because they missed out on a lot of money. Yeah. What you about know? scatting? Is that a term? That's, yeah. Scatting? That's, that's more rare. Uh -huh. You know? That's but more did you rare. ever? Yeah, of course. What? You but how do you just shit that. on the fly? Are you shit shy? <laughs> I mean, a lot of the time I couldn't even do it. But yeah. I still got paid. You know? I, I mean, I, I love they this. pay in advance. Um, no, a lot of the time I couldn't do it. But, you know, it's like when you're in but that industry, you, got to do you it just once. say yes. Yeah, no, I've done it a bunch of times. But I love that. The majority and of the times I couldn't do it. And no glass table, just like on them, right? Yeah, on them. And like, how did they? They like eat it. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It's fucking. I and love that. I would that. leave the room after. Really? Yeah. And so. I can't just like chill in the same. That's disgusting. I know. <laughs> <gasps> Can no. I get you anything? Fork and knife, salt yeah, and pepper. I would just leave and let them do their thing. They got what they wanted anyway. They don't really? need Really? Who? Yeah. What kind of guy eats shit? Oh my god! One time it was this really gorgeous guy, and I was shut just the like, fuck Why? up. I really? Know. I was literally like, and I hated to do sessions with like hot guys because it's like, it's like. It's, like, too close to home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're a hot young guy. Like, yeah. out of here we could, like, connect. So Isn't I don't that like crazy? that. Like, I prefer them to be, like, as nasty as possible so that they're as far removed mm -hmm. from what I'm into. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What are other, like, equally gross things? What about throwing up? Yeah, there were some guys that wanted that, too. 
What about there was a really hot guy that wanted that too, and I can throw up whenever yeah, I want. I could too. Yeah, so it was fine. Like I could do that. What about like being treated like a baby? I had that too. Yeah, yeah, I had that too. I had a client that wanted that for like 16 hours. What? Yeah, and he was like in a diaper and like was like blowing lines of coke for 16 hours. But I remember I made so much money. And that was the first – I remember I had kind of just started – and it was the first time that I had had over $1,000 in my checking account. And uh-huh. I was just like, whoa. Like, and I, I was like 18. I was like still in school. I was a kid. And okay. I just remember being like, oh, my God. Like, I've never seen that number like at the ATM. I remember that was like a Wait, moment. so that was when you were 16? No, I was 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's so crazy. Did he have like a bonnet? No. Was he like, I have to go to the bathroom? No, he would just like hide behind things and be like, mommy, don't be mad. And I'd just be like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was just weird. Yeah, it was weird. But like I said, like, I don't know, I'm a freak too. So to me, this wasn't that weird. Like I right. was just like, oh, I kind of get what you're saying. Like I, yeah. I've understood them, you know, but like I would never, like women are just too smart to be like doing all that, sh- all that shit, you know? Yeah. I, like I still wonder, I'm just like, what is it about men that like they like this? It's so weird. Especially guys who party, um, I feel like get like really weird on drugs. Oh yeah, no, we would get a lot of guys. Like I've sometimes so I'd, I'd times. work the morning shift sometimes and. What's that? It's like I just get there at like 10 a.m. or something, and then and oh, and they'd a, be partying. A lot of guys would come and partying. Or if I worked the night shift really late, they'd come in like three and then not leave until like eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but have you so um, have you ever like had any relationships with people that you've met like outside of? No, no, but like um, okay, so we were talking about the mutual person that we knew oh yeah yeah yeah. how how would we define is that, that how where well, your girl met him well okay so uh, <laughs> so good how, oh how should God. we define the guy um francois okay <laughs> for, and, and how would you describe your relationship um well he just used to come in to talk and i was just like okay and i was like so stoned all the time mm-hmm. that I don't even remember what we talked about, but he would just come in to talk to me. And then I remember one day I was just like, look, I'm going to quit tomorrow. So, so I just gave him my number and the rest is history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he like, was very generous. Yeah. Very generous. I remember the first time he like drove me home. It was like in a really nice car and I didn't even like know what a Bentley was. And, uh-huh. and when I got home, Brianna was like, oh, so what kind of car was it? And I was like, I don't know. It was nice, though. And then when <laughs> she got in the car, she was like, this is a Bentley, Julia. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. And what kind of, like, I, I feel like he, like, you know, got you, like, a lot of nice presents. He did everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I was a real princess, like, for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, it was, like, just being, like, in a gilded cage. Like, mm. it wasn't um, – I don't think I was ready for a relationship that serious. And I don't think I was, like, ready to be, like, loved that much. Like, I could not handle how much he loved me. Like, I, as being so young to, like, hold the weight of, like, a grown man on you. Wow. Like, I always felt, like – it like I like I understood that he loved me so much and he would tell me all the time, but it was almost like when he told me I was just like, please like stop because you're putting so much pressure on me. And like I can't, you know, like I it was just like wasn't very chill. You know? <laughs> like I just It was intense. Very. Like love addict. Very. Mm-hmm. Cause like on paper, like you could probably call it like a sugar daddy? Yeah, but it was But, wasn't. like, for him, it was, it like... It would have been easier. It was, like, a, a, the love of his life sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, it wasn't, like, a sugar... People think that, but... And I could see why. Like, I would, too, but... Yeah. It was, like it was a relationship. Full-blown. Like, mm-hmm. full, full-blown. Like, we hung out all the time. He knew... He knew my parents. Like, mm-hmm. my, my brother. Like, mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like, it was, like, real... Um, it wasn't, it wasn't like, like, I, I don't know how, what a sugar daddy would be like, but maybe it's like we have sex and then they leave you money or something. Like, I don't know. Or maybe you're on mm-hmm. like a consistent, like 
stipend or I don't know, yeah. but like it, this wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So I was saying, I was right before we started. Yeah, that my friend. I'm not friends with her anymore, but this girl. I guess I should say a different name. Um, yeah. Alex, <laughs> that she w- had a thing with him too. Yeah. How did they meet though? I'm curious. Uh, I think that, I think she um, w- did like back page stuff. Yeah. Or she, or worked at like a massage place, but I think it was back. It's so hard to remember because this is like six years ago. Yeah. But it, I think it was like back pages stuff and they like met and then I think he like got her an apartment and like some presents yeah 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 or something or she had like a small allowance or something that's crazy but she but went but that was sexual i don't i i'm sure for sure yeah um but i really yeah i can't remember the details but i know that she had like a freak out um she's bipolar too but yeah, i think she might have been like yeah <laughs> and uh and I think she she had this, like, freak out where she was, like, running around the building naked or something. And then I think she went to, like, a mental hospital. And then she, like, moved to Florida or something. Weird. Yeah. So I, I doubt that. I, I'm sure they don't have a relationship. Oh, and also he was, like, cutting her off and done with her. Yeah. Yeah. So that's funny. Damn. Mm-hmm. So crazy. Um, it's such a small world. Yeah. Yeah. So I like tried uh, to use that against him once, but it what? didn't really work. I said, like, I know you've been taking care of some girl in Brooklyn because I had oh, her. Oh, wow. But I don't yeah. know if I heard it from you or if I heard it from this other girl that you also know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, she's so crazy. She's insane. The craziest thing. Did you know that she lived in my building? I do remember that. And she, she went crazy. She moved, she moved here and then lived with, like, in your building. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that. We were very close. And then she um, started dating this, like, really crazy meth addict guy. Yeah, and then he, like, took all her money. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I remember. I don't I know, know where she's I... at now. She blocked me. Yeah, she blocked me for a while. But really? she always had, like, a weird fixation on me. Like, I don't. I could see that. Yeah, like, I, and I was always like, yo, dude, it's really not that serious. Like, I'm not who you, like, think I am. Like, it's chill. And then she, I don't know, she's just so weird. Do people also get fixations bipolar. on you? Yeah, they mm-hmm. do. They really do. And I'm always just like, why are you, like, projecting? Like, really? I'm, like, not even like this. Yeah. People will just make an idea of who you are. Who do people think you are? People think I'm like this scary, like evil. Scary? Yeah, I get scary I a lot. That. I get scary a lot. A what? Lot, a lot. Yeah. I would have never guessed that. Yeah, I know. And because I, I don't feel, I'm always like, I'm scared. What are you scared for? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I get scary a lot and crazy and like. I'm really not that crazy. Like, I live a pretty chill life, you know? Like, I'm, I, like, it's not, not anymore. I mean, I definitely was totally fucking batch it, but not anymore. Or, like, people think I'm really slutty, but I'm actually, like, I never have sex. Like, literally ever, and I don't even crave it or want it. I feel, yeah, I feel like, you know, I, I've met you a bunch of, or, you know, whatever, how many times, but, like... Um, and I feel like I don't like know you super personal, Mm -hmm. but I see you using, um, like sexual, no, I don't think that you're slutty at all, Mm -hmm. but I see you using like sexuality and like, um, and like creativity. I, I, I see everything from like an artistic place. It totally is. It totally is. But I definitely also use sexuality as like a tool to get what I want. And that was like. Um, that's I not unusual. That. Yeah, no. And I learned that like very early on because, and I look at my friends that grew up like privileged with like money and they do not have that instinct and mm. they don't own their sexuality the way that I do. Like uh-huh. they just like don't, can't get there mentally. Like it's weird. Whereas like for me, I very early on, I was like, oh my God. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like you want this. I want that. Like you scratch my back. I scratch yours. You know, like it was like, like I understood that that was like such a tool and like being pretty I was like oh like I'm gonna be like taken care of and it's kind of like all the things that I should have gotten in like a home Mm -hmm. I like had to get for myself like Mm -hmm. like through the way that I looked like to me that was always like my main tool of like it was like a survival mechanism 100% Mm -hmm. and defense mechanism too Mm -hmm. yeah 
What have some of your relationships been like as a result of that? Um, well, for some reason, I attract like very insecure men. Mm-hmm. And, um, insecure a, men want to be with beautiful, talented women, and then they probably can't handle they it. They can't <laughs> handle it. And they, um, it always takes like an abusive route. But mm-hmm. I think that I'm a, like a very much key player in that too, because I grew up in an abusive home and all I knew was like violence. And mm-hmm. that's how I dealt with like, I, when I get angry, I can't even articulate, like I'll mm-hmm. try to form a sentence and it won't come out. Like I just like, oh, I'm just going to hit you. It's easier. <laughs> you know? Did you have a lot of physically violent relationships? Yeah. I remember, okay, well, I think you had an art show with pictures. It was a book with pictures. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that. Well, basically, my boyfriend at the time had, like, attacked me in this club, and it became this, like, big deal, and it was on page six, and then, like, it was just, like, reblogged a bunch of times, and, like, it just sucked because, like, I noticed that a lot of people, like, weren't on my side, Hmm. you know, either they were like neutral or they were like secretly on his side. And a part of me used to be like, okay, well, I understand because like, you know, everyone like thinks that like I have a sugar daddy and like everyone um, thinks I'm crazy. So they probably are just like on that. And then I realized like, no, I shouldn't be making any fucking excuses. Like, no, what happened to me is what happens to every fucking girl that gets abused. And, And that was a big reality check because I never thought that it would happen to me. You know, I always thought like, well, I'm exempt. I'm the I'm the exception to the rule and I wasn't. And so I guess um that book was a response to that. I was uh-huh. like, "Oh, really? You don't believe me? Okay, well, here are all the photos because I always documented everything." Cause, yeah, cuz I'm you a smart such bitch. a great artistic yeah. eye. Uh-huh. It's and I, like yeah. I think that's my favorite thing about you. Thank you. Yeah. I love that you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love your Facebook statuses. They're hysterical. <laughs> I've Thank like you. shown them to people. Aww. I've been like, oh my gosh. I don't really so like funny. do them anymore. You should because they're so clever. It's well, like, I realize I'm, I'm like, that damn, I, sh- I wish I was this fucking clever. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that book, well, so then that night, what, didn't he like hit you in the face or, um, or you all? Know what I can't happened, remember. Yeah. What had happened was that, um, I introduced violence in our relationship 100%. In a sexual way or? No. Regular. Okay. I don't even like violent sex. I'm like, I don't know who you think I am, but no. Um, But it, it, it happened because he was cheating and he was always lying and it just got to a point where I was so in love with him and I just couldn't. It, like, honestly, I know this sounds so fucked up, is this but guy he was cl- asking for it. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, Wait, is I know this guy a like- club owner? He was, was that a club owner thing? It Why was. do I know that? Yeah, well, because it was such a big deal. Like, it was all anyone talked about. And then this Instagram came out uh-huh. of me, and it was, like, all my old dominatrix photos from when I was a teenager. Who put that out? I don't know, but it was around that time, and I was like, wow. And I used to get, like, hate, Oh, like painting a thing against you. <laughs> Yeah, like it just got, and then I was like, okay, the only way I can do this is to own it and spin it and make it my own. So when that Instagram came out, and it was, I remember that night I had to go to three birthdays, and I remember every single birthday, like people would just come up and like pat me on the back. You okay? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, you're making it fucking worse. Yeah, and they just looked at me like so, like, I think they were just like, yikes, you know, because it was so so bad it really was so devastating I fucking ran up in the Instagram office and I was like Instagram office yeah I like figured out where it was and rocked up in there I remember I was getting a massage oh make sure you're talking oh sorry Sorry. so I was getting a massage and my phone keeps going off and then I'm just like let me just check it and it was Brianna and she was like oh my god and like sent me all the screenshots and I put my clothes on so fast and ran out of there and I ran to the Instagram office I love that that's the first place you went did you get to anyone there no they won't let you upstairs but you can like write a the guy will come down with like a complaint form so I filled out the form and then later that Either later that night or in the evening, it was gone, or in the next day it was gone. But it was already screenshotted and passed around by everybody. So many people sent me the screenshot. Like, is this you? People thought it was me. They were like, "Is this your new Instagram?" I was like, "Are you guys fucking idiots?" Oh, so like, they made an Instagram account. Yeah, pretending to be me with all my dominatrix photos. Like, come call this number and I'll sit on your face. Like, just like what was it? Was it your number? 
no, it was the oh, number of Pandora's God. box. But still, oh. yeah, but still, it was just like, yeah. And then the fucking manager of Pandora's box called me too because he was like, people are calling for you. Uh-huh. And I was just like, oh my God, well, tell well, them. I'll be in at nine. But- <laughs> yeah, I, know, right? I literally was like, well. Um, but yeah, and so then basically what I did was I did this like article with ID and made it about being a dominatrix mm-hmm. and oh so you spun it into your control yeah yeah I love yeah, that. yeah and then I did a whole photo shoot with Richie as my model um and I had them all tied up in the ropes and they were just so amazing like Japanese edit- bondage yeah like uh-huh. these editorial photos of him in like beautiful clothes and just all tied up and like hanging f- from the ceiling head first like yeah. I mean oh my like, god feet first yeah uh-huh. like the photos were so amazing and and I just was like, I mean, and I was just like, yo, like seriously, you could try me, but I'll always come out on top. I always <laughs> will. I always will because I have nothing Check to lose. Me. Yeah, like yeah. literally, like anything you throw at me, I'll like repackage it up and throw it right back at you. How did you come up with that? That's such a good way to like spin it. I think that your was favor. my first thought. I was just uh-huh. like, okay, how damage control? How am I going to fix this? You know. And then in the article, I like talked about how someone had come for me and had like made me feel ashamed, and like <laughs> now I'm going to own my truth. And it was actually an empowering thing because I'd been trying to hide it. And, like, and now I'm just, like, I wouldn't talk about it in interviews. Like, people would, like, kind of know and try to ask me. And I'd be like, no, you can't ask me that. Well, thank you for talking about it today. Well, because now it's, like, <laughs> who, like, what do I do? Act yeah. all brand new. Like, yeah. I didn't already fucking talk about it a thousand times. So whatever. That happened. And then, so basically the book was also a response to all the people mm-hmm. saying that I was lying. Because then they tried to spin PTSD? It as, is that no, what it was? No, it was called symptomatic of a relationship gone sour because then the oh, one of the owners of the club who also owned a gallery had pub. I think he said it to the Observer or somebody. He was just Wait, like, who owned the club? Another owner. You know how clubs have like a thousand okay, owners. But yeah. The, so the, against his. No, partner. against me. Oh, okay, okay. But he uh, tried to be a little more PC in this article, but he had said that 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 what had happened that night was symptomatic of a relationship gone sour. Oh. And I remember I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a book and call it Symptomatic of a Relationship Gone Sour, and it's going to go viral, and he's going to feel like such a fucking moron. I love that. Yeah, no, anything they did to me, I, I – did it right back but that's so funny it was not a happy time not funny but it's hysterical it, it, but it wasn't it was still one of the darkest times of my life and even having to be such a like warrior you know uh-huh. like I didn't really have time to mourn that like I well, had so- now this relationship with this man was like totally over and like I was still very heartbroken about it and I just didn't have, like, time to get over it because I just immediately went into defense attack mode. But it's amazing that you threw yourself into a creative project and something that you can be excited about in a moment of that, you know, like, despair. Totally, totally. And, and, you know, and that you can be so strong in a moment of, like, you know. I've You know, I've always had to be strong, so it was, like – it was fine. And also I, I can compartmentalize my feelings. Like mm-hmm. I can be like, mm-hmm. well, you know, I don't – I can't afford to like be upset right now, you know, because yeah. no one's going to like help me pick up the pieces, you know. It was just like I just have to do this. But I remember I like left New York for a really long time and I left for like six months. After that? Yeah. I literally ran away. Wait. Did you make the book first? I made the first book, the symptomatic one. How long first. did that take you? I did that book in like overnight and it was like Shut printed the in a week. Fuck. Yeah. Uh. I had to. So wait, it was what, like there what was, was no in time. The book? It was the pictures. It was photos of, of what he had done to me in the past, but then it was also photos of like letters from jail from my first jailbird jailbird boyfriend to uh, the coke dealer that I was with for a really long time and he used to send me really crazy letters and and he was very, like abusive as well um and then it was like a lot of I think uh, some maybe some dominatrix photos so overnight you gathered everything you called up like a publisher or yeah something? my my friend Andrew from Richardson Magazine, he mm-hmm. had a, a, a plug for some for a printer in in the United States. So it was, it was pretty easy. I had the it was expensive, but I had them all. Yeah. And I remember I was like, no one's gonna fucking read this anyway. And then it like blew up. Really? And that's what gave me an art career. Wow. Where did you distribute it? Um, I debuted it at um the New York Art 
fair. <laughs> yeah, and and I remember that d- the same day Dashwood Books, uh-huh. which is like one of the best um, oh, art like bookstores in in New York. The, that guy Dash, like the no, oh. no, no, no. It's um, I forgot his name. It's like a British guy, but it's on Bond Street, and it's an art bookstore, and it's mm. like I think one of the only ones. And he came and he placed an order for it, <gasps> and then all these people placed orders for it, and then. <gasps> And then Days did a, an article about it, and it was the number one clicked on, um, like thing ever. And Lena Dunham was second. I remember. So it was <laughs> the most. It was the most passed. The around. real girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it, that was a pretty cool moment, and that's kind of what gave me an art career because before that, I was doing the doing the fashion line, which I wasn't doing a goddamn thing. I was just sitting on my ass in my house. Um, but what a high. It was a high, but regardless, then it became a little overwhelming because I was like, oh, my God, the whole world is seeing me full naked, um, like, bloodied. Like, it was just like, oh, my God. I was like, I realized how much I had, like, like revealed, you know? So yeah. It got really overwhelming because it's all anyone would talk about. So I, I And like that's kind of when I left. Myself. Yeah, no, it's it's exciting because it's like – You know, you always kind of wonder, like, what would people think if they saw the real you? Mm -hmm. You know, that's always, like, because we wear this mask. So it was kind of cool. And now I feel very, like, what you see is what you get. I don't hold back. I never lie. Um, I never feel ashamed of who I am. And I love so that. Did it take a while to get there with the um getting rid of the shame of like yeah. past and stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It did. This is a recent thing. And now I just feel very calm all the time. Like I don't feel like angsty. I'm just living my truth. Mm-hmm. You know? I love and, that. And that's really what admirable makes what people, people happy. attracted to you yeah. too. Yeah, because it's like, you know, a lot of people want to live their truth, but they can't. They're ashamed yeah. and they're afraid of like you know, going against the norm. Do you have any tips on how people can kind of free up to that? Uh, No one cares as much as you do. Mm -hmm. Literally, you can, people will, people are so concerned with themselves, like, sure, you can reveal yourself and people will be into it, but at the end of the day, people have their own lives and it's not going to be like this devastating thing that you think it will be. And I think that's pretty much Because we're so concerned with what other people will think. And it's like, honestly, other people aren't thinking. (laughs) They don't give a fuck. Everyone's thinking about themselves. Exactly. And how they're coming off. And their next move. Yeah. Yeah. So So where did you run away to? I went to Louisiana. And that's when I had my second book, PTSD. And that one. um, I love all those. What happened? Because you used to have all these on your Instagram. Right? Yeah. But the then, photos, you mean? I, I remember mm-hmm. just watching all of this. Yeah, yeah. Watching the Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. they were great photos. Yeah, they were. They it, were. It, I'm trying to, like, think of, like, it has, like, a very Larry Clark vibe. It does. It does. And I, I do, like. Or, like, real life, real world. Yeah. I remember someone someone was like, oh, you're, like, Nan Golden. And I was like. Who? Like, I didn't even I don't know, know who, who that, that is. Was. Yeah, she's, she did uh, a lot of um, photography in the 80s when everyone was, like, dying from the AIDS epidemic. And she captured a lot of really amazing intimate photographs of that. And, like, um, and it was, like, the LES, like, New York City vibe. So it was, like, very beautiful photos. But I didn't even know who she was at the time. But, yeah, I just think, like, um, where people see, um, like – where people see, like, um, how can I put this, like, I guess maybe, like, crazy or, like, um, like, poor or just, like, disgusting or, like, I don't know, we're drug addicts and just where people, where people see, like, debauchery and, like, whatever, I just see humanity. Uh-huh. Like, I'm never, like, I'm never, like, put off by anything that I see because to me it's just like the human condition Mm -hmm. and um and that's what I kind of find more fascinating than like yeah that's kind of what my vibe is why did you go to Louisiana because I had a friend there um Jack Donahue and he's in this band called Salem and like they're 
so amazing. And so I kind of respected his artistry as well. And I was like, well, you know, the only person that I think that would understand me is him. And he kind of also had the same thing where he was like, I'm going to go to Louisiana by myself because he's from Chicago. And so we were kind of on the same tip. And then his bandmate, John, and he was kind of the star of my book because I went there for Jack, but then I met John and, and me and John just like fell in love and whatever. And I was also there with my friend Harmony, who's like totally crazy and so much fun. But you know, it got dark pretty fast. Um, and then in what ways? Well, there's a lot of drugs down there and there really wasn't much to do. So the first three months was amazing. Just like exploring the South. I, you know, I grew up like there's LA, there's New York, there's Europe. I didn't understand that there other was parts of a the world, whole America, or America. Yeah. yeah, and like I, and it's really like Trump's America, you mm. know, like more or less. But like I said, while I was down there, I didn't really go down there looking at them like ignorant or mm-hmm. like because then I wouldn't be able to see like the humanity mm. in them, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. they're not just Trump supporters. They're mm-hmm. they're also like like forgotten people, you know? Mm -hmm. So I kind of had to go with like this open mind. And it was sometimes hard to like get past some of the ignorant things that they would say. I'm not going to lie. Just like racist stuff against like Mm -hmm. black. Like I remember there was like a black guy in this bar and this guy that I had met, this mechanic, he was just like, you stay at your own bar, like something. And I was just like, what? (laughs) And I would like lost it on him. Like there were a few situations like that, but mostly I kind of hung out with these guys in in New Orleans because I lived on the bayou. Mm -hmm. But then I would go to New Orleans and hang out with these guys um, that like – like a trap house, like it was like a full trap house, and I kind of hung out there. What does that even mean? Like it's like, a, well, you know, a lot of the houses are still fucked up because of Katrina. Yeah, and so they don't have like electricity, and like no one goes there. And it was like the ninth ward, and it was really funny because I was with my friend, and she's a drug addict, and she was like trying to score, and I didn't, I didn't want anything at the time, and and she said. And she was like, okay, we need to, like, go to a neighborhood where there's drugs. And I was like, well, I mean, I don't know which neighborhood has drugs here. So she Googled where is Lil Wayne from. That (laughs) is so Ninth Ward? Is It was the Ninth Ward. Why do I know that? I used to love Lil Wayne. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I knew that. That's like, oh, my God, how weird is that? Yeah, well, it's super, super famous. I just felt like I was on Jeopardy and somehow, like, knew – it was honestly. It was. So I don't know dangerous. anything about Louisiana. I just feel really good it's, right it's now. It's a B. <laughs> no, you did really well. A plus. Um, so and then we met these guys, and I still talk to them to these day. Uh, to this day, two of them are in jail. One has a <laughs> cell phone. I don't know why I at that. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? I'm and, still on a high. I'm guessing ninth board. Um, and one of them has a cell phone in jail, and will like send me photos. It's some. It's amazing because in New York, there's no fucking way you would sneak a cell phone in. But yeah, like New Orleans, and, whoa. He, and he would call me at like midnight. He called me at midnight on my birthday. Oh, yeah, Corey. He's like kind of in love with me. We had a thing what we up, made Corey? out once. Love him. And and he, I remember he called me at midnight. And I was like, "How are you like out of your cell?" And he literally was like, "We run this prison. Like, yeah, no cops don't go to the ninth ward. It's super super dangerous." I remember even when I was hanging out with the trap boys, like if we would go somewhere, just from the house to the car, they were like ducking and diving, and like what does that windows mean? Windows always up because they're shooters. Like there's literally like snipers. It's, it's like shoot to kill. They'll like just hang out and they kill each other all the time. Like in the ninth ward, there's. People getting murdered all the time. So Even you went funeral, there looking for people drugs? People will be getting killed at funerals. Like someone will be like, oh, I know where this person's going to be because their friend just died. Yeah. And roll up and, sh- and do a drive-by at a funeral. Like wow. it's it's really like next level um, whatever. So – and I didn't realize, you know, because I'm like, oh – the hood in New York, like Harlem, yeah, you know, like yeah. East New York. East New York doesn't have shit on this. And I didn't really realize until after I left. I remember I'd be in the trap and like sit down and I sat down on a gun. You know what I mean? I'm like, it doesn't belong to anyone. <laughs> but it was just, Were I you worried realize. for your own safety? Never. There really? was never a second where I was worried. Well, because you I, probably didn't carry yourself. Like, do you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, they they literally didn't look at us like custies. They looked at us yeah. as, like, homegirls. Like, we would, like, go to the bar. We would go to, like, bounce clubs and just have, like, the best time what ever. What are bounce clubs? You know, like, like New Orleans twerking? Bounce. Yeah. It's, like, bounce music. Um, You got to look it up. It's really awesome. I think... 
I think it started mainly with like the gay community, I think. Um, and then it like kind of took off and, and now it's it's like a, a Louisiana thing. And there's a lot of photos of the trap boys in my book. What are like, but I, what does that mean? Like drug dealer, crackhead people? Like there was a few crackheads. There was one guy that had a glass eye and the... The eye, the part with like the pupil would always like go left or right, and uh-huh. I remember he would m- make me like roll the eye back to like so you touched it. Was, it? They did touch it a few times, uh, but it was just like fam, you know. Yeah. Like, I got you, and it was fine, and it was it was really it was super super. It was you know what it was like one of those like probably like once in a lifetime um, experiences. Yeah, like how I don't I don't see myself hanging out in a trap house anytime soon. How long were you there for? I was in Louisiana for six months. And did you feel like completely content being there, or did you ever feel the first like three months? And then you felt like what the f- were you like what the fuck am I doing and here? Then, yeah, doing and then the life? last three months I was like what the but I was so afraid to go back to New York and like because face all the people the that book. betrayed me. Yeah. To face all the people that I thought were my friends that betrayed me. So when was it time to go home? Um, was there like anything there was, that happened? There, yeah, something did happen, but I can't talk about it. Okay. Um, and it was pretty serious, and I literally just booked a ticket and went home. Yeah, that was it. Was done. It was done. Okay, we had to leave. Like the, <laughs> yeah. I think the where we were, I think that people were starting to look at us a little sideways. Oh, you really? Know? Yeah, like, mm. you know, we lived on the bayou and everyone knows each other and it's not like there's many people down there in our in our parish, like it wasn't a town. And they, like, knew it just started to get a little weird. Was it like in Wild Wild Country when the Rajneeshi showed up and they were like, no. Mm, <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking no, about? No, it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, no, it wasn't that serious, but... <laughs> That's more serious? Yeah, like the neighbors that we used to hang out with, like, didn't want to hang out with us anymore. Oh, okay. You guys were getting a little crazy. Yeah, them. we were getting a little crazy, and they were kind of like, who are these people? Like, one has, like, a Michigan license plate. The other one has, like, an Illinois plate. And, you know, they they notice stuff like that, you mm-hmm. know? Well, you're disrupting their home and probably yeah. partying or something. Yeah, and- you know, I think they, they thought they kind of... Moving like I remember, stuff. like my friend that had a house there. Like suddenly, the guy came over and was like, "You have to move out. Like w- we want the house back. Like we're not renting it anymore." Like it was just like oh. it got yeah yeah no it was like time to go yeah like it was time to go. And then we had like kind of done this thing that was a little shady, and like it just got like the cops were like starting to like roll around, and we lived in like um. We lived in this this long road that goes into, like, the Gulf of Mexico. And, like, there's one road in and one road out, and there's nothing else. Like, there was just nobody lived there except us. So, like, for the cops to go there, it's like they're going there for us, you know? Like, so it wasn't – like, they had never – I'd never seen a cop there before. And they started, like, rolling around, and there was, like – like cars coming around the house late at night and you know you could hear it like crackle of like them over the gravel so I was yeah. just like oh okay it just started to get a little weird and then I just booked a ticket and left immediately and I remember coming back to New York was like that m- month before my art show because I, I had already had this art show planned because my friend Richie which was art show is this PTSD for the second book yeah for so the book. you were down there um you get did you know that you wanted to make another book or you just started taking pictures and uh, said the, oh I this is- no no what had I, the first three months I was there I didn't take any photos at yeah. all and then Richie had called me and he was like, I want to like do this art show with you. Um, I'm going to curate it. And then he gave me a camera for Christmas. And so the last three months, I I didn't go there planning to do that. It just kind of happened. And then I had all this other amazing material because John and I used to like write each other poems and, and we had a really amazing codependent relationship. And so I had so much amazing material and then I made this book, but the the month leading up to that art show was like the worst time of my life. I was just like doing drugs alone in my room, and then I remember when the show happened, it got so much um, praise and acclaim, and it was like covered by every like you know press whatever. And it was just I remember I like left the show early to like go do drugs by myself. What drugs? Were you uh, doing like, like pills, like uh-huh. opiate pills, and I remember I was just like. 
I should be so happy right now, yeah. but I can't even be happy because. I'm not with like the people that I was have just been with for the past six months, and oh, you we missed yeah, that. and we had had this falling out that I'm not going to get into, mm-hmm. but it took about a year for us to like really rekindle. Like it just got really everything just kind of fell apart, and that's kind of I guess what happens when you put four mentally unstable people together. There was mm-hmm. a lot of jealousy, and there was just like a lot of weird passive aggressive. It just got dark towards mm-hmm. the end. You know, I kind of knew I was. I should have left sooner. Let's just put it that way. I kind of mm-hmm. dragged it out a little too long. So, yeah, it was just really sad. Then I came here, and it was also – because then I was like, okay, because Harmony had decided to move here. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm here just, at L.A.? Yeah, so a day after the show, I uh, literally the next day, I came here and to go to be with Harmony again. And that was a really dark time, too. And then while I was here, I got offered another show here. So I did the show here. And still, same thing. Same uh, PTSD. Same, yeah. yeah. And same thing. I just, like, sh- I knew that I should have been so happy, but I, like, wasn't. What do you think was missing? I have no idea, to be honest. Mm. I really, I can't even tell you what the issue was. I think it was that I felt, like, so isolated. And I felt like when I went back to New York, I couldn't reintegrate. Like, all the friends that I used to have, like, I hadn't talked to them in months. Like, when I was in Louisiana, I didn't talk to anybody. Really? Yeah. What about, like, your best friends? I talked to Richie yeah. and Brianna, but not that much. Like, I was just, like... Doing And thing. they didn't really, like, agree with the way that I was living. Like, they kind of knew. Like, they could see it through Instagram and mm-hmm. stuff, but it, like, wasn't... Like, Richie came to visit, but, like, Brianna refused. You know, it was kind of mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, so that was really dark. But I have not had a dark moment like that since, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm bipolar, so occasionally I do get into these depressive episodes that do last, like, a few months. But surprisingly, I didn't get one this year. So I'm, like, so happy about that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I upped my dosage. That's what happened. I, like, knew winter was coming, and I I went there in the fall, and I was like, "Let's, let's really up this really quick. And it was fine. Yeah. How does it feel when you're at your own art show and watching everyone walk around? Look, is it a similar feeling to seeing someone wear your designs? Like, no, because like the design, I felt so disconnected to the designs when mm-hmm. I was at the art show. Like that was me. Like there was yeah. like, everyone was looking at like who I really was. But like I said, I was so desensitized and I did not give a fuck. What were some of the images in that show? Um. The one in New York, they allowed me to really put up the crazy shit. So we had, like, prostitutes, like, doing drugs, and we had, like, male prostitutes as well, like, being, like, sodomized. Like, it was just Whoa. so much more crazy. Male prostitutes and, being sodomized? Yeah. With what? With a baton. A, ba- a police baton? No, like, a clear baton. What's a clear baton? Maybe it wasn't a baton. You know, like, the two batons, like, linked together by a chain, and, like, you can spin them or something. You know what I'm talking about? It's, like, a weapon, I think, maybe. No. Fuck, I forgot. But, yeah, like, it was just way crazier. Yeah. And then the one here was a little more toned down. Huh. Yeah. Because the gallery. Yeah. Wouldn't want you to put the cool stuff? No. Then I would have been like, then what's the fucking point? Yeah, I mean, they were paying me, so I was like, oh, okay, okay. whatever. So they, <laughs> they selected. Yeah, they did select. But I have, How funny I had is a that? Lot of New York is so much cooler. Yeah, New York is definitely a little cooler. Did you shoot everything on a film camera? Yeah, I did. And well, I, I never used one. a film camera before. Did you love it? I, I mean, I haven't used it in a long time, uh-huh. but... I didn't really even know how to use it. So a lot of the photos have all these defects because I didn't know how to, like, do the light on, like, the exposure. And I didn't know how to, like, um, zoom. And it was an old, a vintage... I can't even remember the brand. Oh, my God. But that almost, like, matches the vibe, though. Well, that's what I'm saying. And then so they kind of came out, like, really cool. And like, fucked like, up. Like, it, everything's, like, a fucked, fucked up. up. Blurry. Yeah. The lights were awesome. Like, yeah. there was a lot of really cool... Um, shots because of it so it worked out and now in retrospect I'm I'm happy with it and then didn't you have another art show after that I did I had I did R.A.P. Julia Fox at um a gallery in New York and I did that last year kind of uh, kind of around this time um and that one was just I I don't know I kind of was like so fat I literally was like god I like wonder what um 
going to my own funeral would be like, you know. So I was like, Empire no. Records. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like... Is that where you got it from? No. Oh. No, no, no. I was just like, I've always, you know, I feel like everyone kind of thinks that. Like, yeah. who would stay, who would, like, come. go to the podium and, like, speak? And mm. who would come? And, like, who would pretend that we were, like, so close and we weren't? Um, and so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a an art show with, on, like, in, under that premise of, like, it's going to be, like... Um, a funeral for you. Kind of, yeah, mm-hmm. like a memorial. So I had, like, I had, a um, like, a barbed wire fence put in. Like, you know, those, like, uh, like wire yeah. like, crisscross, yeah. whatever, with barbed wire at the top. And then I had, like, stuffed animals and flowers. And then I had, like, a thing where people could leave notes. Yeah, no, it was, like, the coolest thing ever. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And did you lay in the... No, at first oh. I was like, I shouldn't even go because that would be so much better. It was like a memorial. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And then people actually brought their own flowers. Like, people oh understood. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. It was really fucking cool. And I feel like... Um, did that make you feel loved in a weird way? Did. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, was, I was pretty happy after... Um, All these people care about me. Yeah, you know? no, it was so cool. So many people came and it was like, you know, and every time I do something, I'm like, no one's going to come because I don't go to anything. I know that feeling. Yeah, and I'm like, why would they show up for me? Because I don't show up for anybody. And it's nothing personal. I just I just have I'm in my own world and I have so much like, um, I am kind of a loner at heart. You know, Mm -hmm. like, I really do enjoy being alone. I've traveled the country alone. Really? Yeah, across country a bunch of times, gone places alone. All over. Uh I think I've been to, like, 40 of the states. Like, I've really? literally gone everywhere. And I've gone alone because With it's, like... With no plan sort of thing? No plan. Because I'm very much, like, a like a, the universe will guide me kind of gal. You know, like, I, you know, God, you plan, God, God laughs kind of. Like, I just, you know, I'll meet someone and they'll tell me to go here. And I go, you know, and that's kind of the way that I, like, live my life. Like, I don't, I don't want to plan because then I don't, I don't, I'm not listening to, like... Where so you like to be from. alone, but you also don't have a problem with socializing with strangers no. to like... No, no, no. I love people. That's... I really do. I love people of all different um, walks of life. because, Like I said, because I see the humanity. I don't yeah. see our differences. I see our similarities. So you were just... I mean, now, you know, you were just in Vegas, right? Was I was in Reno. Oh, because now I'm, sh- oh. I'm, doing, I'm shooting a short film. I'm actually going there on Friday, and I'm shooting a short film. My best friend from childhood, Kara, her and I went to Reno, and we met these all these kids on the side of the road. Because we went to Reno. We knew we wanted to make a film. And she had said, I, I feel like we should go to Reno. Because she had never been and I had never been. And I was like, you're so right. Like, there's a story here and we're going to find it. And within, like, 30 minutes of being there, we got there really late because we drove. It's, like, an eight-hour drive. And we met these kids on the side of the road. And it was like, there you go. That's a story. And then I met their parents the next day. And they kind of told us about, like, the kidnappings and the trafficking and, and the Human underage trafficking? prostitution <gasps> is really big. Yeah, and they take, Is that big in Reno? Yeah, and they take them from Reno to Tahoe. And so all the rich guys... Lake Tahoe? Yeah, and all the rich people Obviously. that, like, rich guys there will, like, abuse these girls. Shut the fuck up! Yeah. So I didn't even know about this. I know, and that's kind of why I'm making this film, because I'm like, how, how do people not know? And there's only, like, one safe house in Reno for victims of, like... Like, you know, girls that have been, like, abused by their pimps or, you know. You just discovered this? Yeah. Off, oh, my. It's, like, serendipitous. Yeah, I know. Exactly. So now I'm doing this film, and I've been, I went there in February, and I've been preparing ever since. And, and I, like, art was really fun for me, but I don't feel, I feel like it was very self-indulgent. You know, even, like, doing the, like, my past and then doing, like, my love. Like, but it's a way then, to creatively express yourself through pain. It was, but now I'm kind of like, all right, I'm done, like, doing uh-huh. what I'm being Been about Been there, me. done that. Yeah, like, I just don't don't see, like, I, yeah, no, I think I did help a lot of people. I did get a lot of people saying, like, oh, thank you so much for, for being so candid. But I feel like I should use my voice to to help, like, people that don't have their own voice. So wow. I'm, I'm doing this film now. And I would like to get into film, you know. I I, I just, I feel like film is, like, 
on the like um, hierarchy of yeah. like creativity, I uh-huh. think film is the top. You know, like yeah. I feel like okay, can I do it? Like I'm gonna do it. Let's see how acting, it goes. writing, directing, yeah, producing. yeah, yeah. Like that's the top, top dog. What do you um, like? What's your kind of dream within that? Or uh, um, somewhere? I wouldn't. I'm not really. I don't see myself as an actress. But, like, you know, if the opportunity came, I'd take it. But I think, obviously, like, writing and directing mm-hmm. would be, like, my main mm-hmm. Is there anything in particular that, uh, like, a certain story you want to tell or? Um, I've, like, written scripts, like, just at from my imagination, mm-hmm. like, that don't have anything to do with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've, I've written scripts that, that do have to do with me. But not about, like, I'm not the protagonist. Just, like, mm-hmm. things that have happened. Influenced and, by Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, writing what you know. Yeah, I've written what I know, and then I've written what I don't know. And when I was writing what I didn't know, was it was way more fun. So it was, like, because I could kind of take it where I wanted to. I didn't have, like, a frame of reference of, yeah. like, what has happened to me. So it's, it's way more fun. And then you have all these characters, and they're kind of pawns, and you can, like, control what they do. And, like, having that power over these characters is also kind of thrilling, um, cause you're like a puppet master, yeah. kind of. Wait, I'm more, I'm, not I'm more. I want to hear more about the child trafficking thing. Yeah, so basically the whole premise of the film is that, you know, these four girls, they're, um, they're not allowed to leave their trailer park because there's like this looming threat of a guy kidnapping girls. And you know, they never we never really say it in the film, but it's alluded to a few times based on their dialogue. This is true. No, 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 no. <gasps> I I basically Wait, this isn't true? Well, no, the trafficking is real is it, true. To bring them to Tahoe though? N- not these specific girls, uh-huh. but that's just what we were told that a lot of the girls that do get okay. trafficked, they go to in, they go into California. Okay. And then it's all right. Then the jurisdiction's kind of weird. It's just like once they're over there, it's really hard to get them out. Mm-hmm. That's what they said to me. So basically, I took these four girls, and they all play themselves, but I gave them the scenario. Yeah. I was like, so, so we're going to do this, and... Um, it's just a short film, so it's not like that long, and it's just like a little a little glimpse into childhood in Reno, where mm. and Reno's like a fucking deserted. It's like almost like rejects of every walk of life. Like you're, it's all it's really cracky. Like there's not one like civilized person there. Let's put it that way. Uh-huh. Like if you live in Reno, you're you're not right. You know, and, and you I'm, make friends with all these people, right? Uh-huh. Very easily, yeah, like. Very. And do people take you in? They probably think you're like fun, nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I usually don't have any issues because um, it's like if you just talk to someone like they're human and not like you feel like sorry for them or whatever, and just be understanding and compassionate, but without, um, like. Like, having pity or, like, you know what I mean? Just, Mm -hmm. like, be chill. Like, that's Mm -hmm. always my thing. Just, like, be chill, be chill. What's Uh, some of the stuff that you've learned from hanging out with all of these interesting different people? Like, about life or how you should treat people? Or I'm sure you've looked at life differently after a lot of these experiences. Yes and no, because I kind of grew up in, like, a white trash situation. So I kind of have seen, like, really dark shit already. Like, I was never shocked by anything. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there were times where I was, like, a little judgmental. Like, I was chilling in this, like, trailer. And the this woman was on the couch, and she was, like, basically talking about how she smoked Newports all throughout her pregnancies and how it's fine. And just, like, so <laughs> nonchalant. And I was uh-huh. – that's when I was, like, ooh. <laughs> I that feel was, like, like you- where I drew the line. Yeah. Which is funny because I've seen everything. But that, for some reason, sticks out in my mind. <laughs> you should be documenting all these people. Like yeah. a document – I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like you're able to get inside sure. a lot of – you know, situations and meet interesting sure. characters. But I also don't want to be, like, this exploitive. photographer that's, like, yeah, that's, like, a voyeur. Like, anyone yeah. I ever took photos of, I was a direct participant in whatever we were doing. Like, it wasn't, uh-huh. like, 
okay, you guys get fucked up and I'll take photos. No, it was like, Uh all right, we're all getting fucked up. Like, you take photos, you take photos. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't, it was, like, I hate, like, I have a few friends that are like that and they come from privilege and they're, like, fascinated with, like, like, poverty and whatever. And I always think, like, that's not your story to tell, you know? Like, it's, like, weird where I feel like it is my story to tell because I come from not like don't get me wrong like obviously like I have so much more privilege in the majority of the world but yeah you know I did go through some things you know and the pain is the same you know like whatever it might be like so I don't like to go places and take photos of people yeah Mm -mm. unless I like have this calling sure but Mm -hmm. otherwise like you'll never see me like with a camera around my neck like taking photos like absolutely not like Like, I do like more like documentary style stuff so if I'm not if I don't have like a direct purpose or a direct story I'm trying to tell I don't just take mm -hmm. photos no Uh, I feel like you can kind of just like decide you want to do something and just do it like you have good follow through yeah I'm a one of those people because for for the majority of my life I was like one of those people that kind of abandoned projects halfway and like lost it and I fucking hated that about myself like mm-hmm. I remember being like I'm so fucking useless so now I like really make it a point that if I say I'm gonna do something I do it what helps you stick with that because I feel like that could be a lot of problem I mean you know I don't even know I think something just switched in my mm-hmm. head where and now it's like very much like by any means necessary so I'll do it I don't care what I have to do it's like I see the I see the reward at the end like I don't I don't see the hard work I'm do you like, stick with oh so you don't make it like oh this is so hard like no 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 this is gonna be amazing no. at the end just push through no yeah and I really do think like attitude is so important if you go into something already thinking about what all your obstacles will be mm. forget it forget it I feel like it. I'm prone to doing that I you know I have moments too um of that but very quickly I'm like nope like I'm not even gonna go there and I just focus on like the the, the final product mm-hmm. and manifesting that do you do a lot of manifestation totally tell me about that I just ask the universe for stuff and do you feel like it works it's work yes. I've it I've done that too it and works I, like and it's scary i i've noticed that the best way of manifesting is when you have zero negativity attached to it yeah you know uh-huh. and it's like you're just like i want your or like you know like i need this or i want this and then you're like yeah that's gonna happen and that's like the vibe okay. and then it usually comes to you but like that's what i've noticed for me but like i know that's not really like specific it's been kind of casual yeah which, it, Do you it feel happens like, sometimes other you know, it happens sometimes and you're conscious of it and then it happens sometimes and you don't realize and then later you'll be like, Oh wow, like that totally happened and that's what I had wanted, you know. So it happens, but at a very, very young age, like even I think at like eighteen or nineteen, I realized that I always got what I wanted. Uh-huh. I always and I did it for myself. And I remember being like I really young being like, damn, be careful what you wish for because Mm. I always got it. Like I, for some reason, I don't know what it was, but, and every time I got it, it led to something catastrophic. Like I remember I was like, I used to like pray at night for like a sugar daddy situation and then it came in that form and I couldn't handle it, Mm -hmm. you know, like it, 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 I didn't get a sugar daddy, but I definitely got taken care of yeah. in a I guess similar type of sugar daddy mm-hmm. way even though there was love involved so I don't know if that changes anything or like I really when I was younger I really wanted to live on St. Mark's and then I lived on St. Mark's and it turned into like the squatter house from all this <laughs> uh-huh. t- Tompkins you know where in the, and then you know and then I wanted to live near my my nail salon on Clinton and that was like devastating so anything I ever really wanted just kind of not everything but there were certain things that I ended up getting that I just was not prepared for do you do any like ritualistic sort of things for specific certain when there's a full moon um full moons are really great for manifesting Mm. so whenever there's a full moon I always have a moment like under the moon and like taking in the like the waves at the full moon because you know when the full moon I feel like the you know the, the moon pulls the earth and like the moon kind of um, controls like the waves and the ocean and everything there is proof that the moon does affect us so I whenever there's a full moon I feel like very um 
like spiritually in tune. Like I feel like the manifestation on a flick in, in one day of the full moon, like three things that I thought about will happen. What do you, do you do anything specific? Like, surround yourself with candles sort of thing like not hold a crystal really. like really. or you just like I want you know I want to go to Europe I want to go to Europe like I, like do you how do you like uh word it or I literally will be like please universe like I can help me do this so I can then do this and like serve my purpose on this earth I you know like I'll do stuff like that uh-huh. But I feel like the candles and all the, the bells and whistles, I feel like that's kind of more for you mm. than the universe. It's for you so that you believe what you're saying. Because if you don't believe what you're saying, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, if you have doubt while you say something, I feel like it it's not as powerful. Yeah. Like you can't put fear into the equation, you know? How do you feel like you've changed over the past couple of years? In which way, in what ways? Well, I'm not, like, a bad person anymore. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. before I remember, I always had, like, a hidden agenda, and I was I was not a team player, and if I was, it was fake. Like, I always was going to get one up on you. Uh-huh. So selfish. But I think that being selfish came from, like, again, the survival thing. Uh-huh. Where it was like, I don't really have time to think about you (laughs) yeah about me like I need to eat (laughs) have a roof over my head like sorry um so now I'm definitely like nicer more inclined to help somebody Mm -hmm. um like I don't like steal anymore like I remember like I'd have clients and they'd leave the room and I'd like go through their wallet and take all their money yeah (laughs) like yeah. yeah like I would never do that now um like stuff like that I remember I, like, had a one-night stand with this guy, and he was, like, in the shower the next day, and I was, like, I can't believe you just left your watch on the table. I could have just taken it, and it, like, freaked him out, and I was, like, I don't know why I said that. (laughs) Yeah, that's kind of, like, a weird thing to say. (laughs) I know. I was, like, why would I say that? It was so, and then we, like, never talked again. It was so weird. Yeah. (laughs) Um... Do you have any, like, daily rituals that you do? No. <laughs> I wish, but no. Uh-huh. I'm, like, such a day-by-day kind Healthy of eating, working out, any kind no. of shit like that. No. Meditation. I mean, I go to Earth praying. Bar and I get a coconut smoothie every day. That's a it. coconut smoothie? I haven't heard the, of that. The Coconut Bliss smoothie. Uh-huh. I'll check Earth it out. Bar. Yeah, it's so good. Super sweet. But that's, like, pretty much the only thing I do every day. And like, then, I don't even wash. Oh, brush my teeth. That's it. Uh huh. <laughs> Sometimes a <the> shower. <laughs> Sometimes a shower. I'll do the like, wash my body but not my hair kind of thing. Yeah. Like I'm just like I can't. Then I have to like blow dry it. It's just not happening. What What kind of like things do you want to do in the future? Film. Film for sure. Um, I like can't. Um. Places you want to go. Places I want to go. Creative things. I want to go to like do. Bangkok. I don't know. Like where? Bangkok. Oh, like, okay. I would like to go to Bangkok. I don't know. I can't. I don't think like that far ahead because then I'll like have a panic attack. Uh huh. Because then I'm like, well, will I have kids? And will I? And it's uh-huh. just like I can't. Like I'm just like, all right, short term, <laughs> short term goals. So you Um, keep everything short term. Yeah, because I don't know how I'm going to feel, you know, Uh like whether I'm bipolar, whether I just kind of like go with the wind, but like I don't, like I just don't know how I'm going to feel. So I just feel like it's a waste of time for me to like think that far ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Like some people have the five year plan and it works for them, but like I can't fucking think that far ahead. I can barely think ahead like one month, literally. I always hated the five-year plan thing. Like, in school, when they're like, and what's your five-year plan? Or, like, in a job interview. Yeah. It's so hard to, it's like, uh, It's like, I'm just going to lie. It's a question. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that question. Yeah. I think they should get rid of that. <laughs> um, and then I guess, you know, we can wrap up with, what kind of, like, advice would you give to young women? Um, whether it's about you know, kind of following their dreams, creative stuff, life stuff, Um, things that you feel like is important that you've learned along the way. um, You can do anything a man can do. Like, don't ever think like, oh, I can't do this because I'm a girl. Like, that, for me, went out the window. So, And also, I grew up with my dad and my brothers. 
And I always, like, I don't know if maybe I just kind of had to man up to, like, deal with it. But I never felt like being a girl was going to, like, I remember I always wanted to do the cross-country thing by myself, but I was, like, I mean, not by myself, but I was always like, you know, I want to do the cross country, but like, who's going to come with me? Like, I can't go alone. It's dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's fucking bullshit. Just be smart. You know what I mean? Like, don't approach like a bunch of truckers at a truck stop. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, be safe, but like, you can do it. You can do anything. You so know? you just like rent a car and like drive somewhere. Mm-hmm. Well, I had my lawyer buy me a pickup truck. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, he's such a fool. And How did you get your lawyer to buy you a pickup he, truck? He, like, fell in love with me, and he bought me a pickup truck. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we don't talk anymore. <laughs> and um, Why and then did I you want a pickup truck? Because, well, I think that having the pickup truck was good because no one's going to fuck with someone in a pickup truck because they probably, like, thought I was a guy or, like... Because a lot of the time I would have to, like... I would be so tired. I'd be passing out at the wheel and I'd, like, just have to pull over at any gas station and, like, sleep in the car. Mm. And I feel like, you know... I don't know. Maybe no one approached the truck because it was just, like, a... It's, like, a guy car, you know? It's, like, I hate to say it, but, you know, it is. Um... So, yeah, you can you can do anything a guy can do. Wait, so you just got in the truck. Where did you go to in the truck? Um, I took the northern route west, and then I took the southern route back east. But I've also just, like, gone to states far away. But, like, it wasn't necessarily, like, across country. But I've gone, like, everywhere even by myself. What are some of your favorite cities or places to um, visit that you think people maybe wouldn't know are so awesome? I mean, I personally love Arizona. I think it's, like, the most beautiful state. Um, it's also one of the richest states, and, like, you can see that. Like, it's really nice. Um, and I like that in the south, like, southern Arizona, you'll get, like, desert or whatever, and then as you go north, you get, like, mountains and pine trees, and it's, like, beautiful landscapes and I had a really amazing um, experience on a Native American reservation there so I do hold it really close to my heart and then the the Antelope um, Canyon is there which I think everyone should see it's so fucking cool um, and yeah I just feel I really like Arizona I really like driving through Nebraska huh it almost looks like um I didn't take, like, a main route. I kind of took, like, a more, like, backdoor route. And it just it it just looked abandoned. But it was really beautiful. Um, and I don't know. There's so many. Every state has, like, something. The East Coast sucks. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. It's way too populated. Um, there's not that many amazing landscapes. There's, like, a toll every two seconds. Like, uh-huh. here you can freaking drive around, like, and you won't get a toll And You don't get car days. sick? No. Wow. Mm-mm. Sick of being in the car? I love cult car culture. I love it. Because what is I, car culture? Like, like, just, like, L.A., like, any place that you just, like, drive. Like, wow. that's, to me, that's car culture. And I love it because I love going places, but I don't like, like, moving. Like, I'm still kind of, I'm, like, a far. more lazy inclined. No, I love it because I love to watch, like, changing landscapes. Hmm. And I just love, like, landscapes. You know, yeah. New Mexico is really fun, too. Um, Do you listen to music or podcasts? Oh, for sure, or, for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I'll listen to, like, um, like, I love comedy and stuff, so mm-hmm. I'll listen to, like, like comedy, um, like, stand-up. Like stand- yeah, I listen to stand-up while I go, and that's really fun. And then, yeah, like, music, and, yeah, I just, like, I like it. I like it. It's easier to do it with someone else, obviously, so you can, like, alternate, mm-hmm. but I can I can do it. I drove I drove from Georgia to New York wow. in one day, and that was, it was maybe, like, like a 14-hour drive. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, I can Ugh. go. I can go. I, wow. Once I, the first few hours suck, but mm-hmm. then after, you just, very, You're on like an autopilot. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, of Julia, course. for coming. Where of can course. people find you on social media? And I mean, I guess Instagram. My Instagram's R I P Julia Fox. 
because I got I got my Instagram deleted, so this is my new Instagram. Um, yeah. So. And then where can people can people buy your books or check them no, out? No, I don't I don't sell them anymore. But I mean, on my website, I have I have like a few copies of PTSD left. So yeah, www.juliafox.com. Yeah, and I'll sell a few there, but I don't sell the first one anymore because it's just like I need to let that go mm -hmm. from my life. Like I just have to move on. I hate I hate doing old shit, talking about old shit. Like I'm very like, what's next? What's next? Yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, Not when I'm older, when I'm older, I'll probably like drop it again. Like and mm -hmm. and maybe like do the layout a little better and make it more high quality and then sell it for a lot of money when I'm older. Because people hit me up about it all the time, but I just don't. Yeah. Know. Yeah. All right. It was going for like a hundred bucks, which is insane that people oh. pay that. Yeah, for like a little like tiny, yeah, like paperback. Situation. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, Did you make like, money from that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I did make a lot of money from that. That's sick. Books. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. I love money, so I worked <laughs> out. <laughs> Should we call this episode I Love Money? Yeah. Really? Money. You, I mean, that's like, my, to me, money is freedom, so I Ooh. need to have both. Mm -hmm. So I need money to, to be free. I love it. Yeah. Like, I don't buy nice shit for myself anymore. I just, like, pay for, like, trips or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, I like experiences. Yeah, like artistic endeavors that I have to, like, like, I'm funding this whole film, so, you know money yeah great i love money thank you julia of course thank right. you <laughs>